Alright bitches, so we're back for another episode of Dragon Ball Super, and this episode is number 30, and this episode is called Rehearsing for the Martial Arts Tournament, Who Are the Two Remaining Members? Now, this is probably going to be, uh, thus far, you know, the shortest one of these little review things. This episode is probably the most, like, you know, filler episode that they pretty much possibly could do. This is essentially more or less a recap episode. Uh, this is focusing on a lot of the previous events of Dragon Ball Super. So, the episode picks up with Goku and Vegeta sort of flying through the air, wondering who they're going to make their next, uh, like, who who's going to be the next pick for uh, the team for the tournament. And Krillin flies up, and he asks uh, when they're going to go on their space picnic. And it, it, you know, it turns out that, like, Goku had kind of told a, a fib to Chi-Chi and said they were going on, like, a space picnic with Beerus and didn't really explain the tournament well. So this causes Vegeta to explain pretty much all the events that happened uh, in the last couple episodes after the Frieza arc ended, you know, with Champa arriving on Beerus' planet and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And also, you know, sort of explaining about the, you know, the different 12 universes and all that shit. So then they get down to it and they're talking about who, you know, their pick for the next member should be. And they mention Majin Buu. Now, Vegeta says, you know, he did get the uh, evil Buu expelled from him. And they do show a quick flash back to uh, the fight against Kid Buu. And then Vegeta seems quite skeptical, mentioning, you know, you know, more recap flashbacks back to how Boo was more or less beaten in one hit by Beerus, you know, way back in episode 5 or 6 or 7, whichever episode it was. But Goku still thinks it's one of their best bets for a uh, team member. Now, then, something happens that again has me pissed off. They are just really fucking with me. I am someone who pays very close attention to small details and stuff. And it's, you know, episodes like this that make me really think I care more about the Dragon Ball canon than the fucking creators of the show do. So, Goku mentions how, you know, Kid Buu is reborn in, you know, basically a, a normal Earthling. Now, of course... With the way this timeline is working, we're probably one, two, one or two years after the Kid Buu fight, maybe three. It's very difficult because there's not like a concrete, you know, passage of time. It's more based on the number of times Shenron has been summoned. So it's likely at least two, probably three years since they beat Kid Buu. So Oob would have been just born. Obviously, Goku is referencing Oob. Now... Don't forget that the last couple episodes of Dragon Ball Z and the last couple um, chapters of the manga involve Goku fighting with Oob at one of the world tournaments. Now, Dragon Ball Super is supposed to slot in between when they beat Kid Buu and then when Goku fights Oob at the end of Dragon Ball Z. And if you guys remember, when they arrive at the tournament... And Goku tells Vegeta, you know, Vegeta's, Oh! Nani! Shock! I can't believe it! A reincarnation of Boo! Who would have ever guessed? Yet here they are, fucking with us. Goku and Vegeta talking about it plain as day. And Vegeta mentions, Oh, yeah, if that wasn't by chance you asked King Yama to do it, huh? And, like, Vegeta is discussing the fact that Oob exists with Goku, yet, you know, four years down the line... Vegeta's gonna be like, oh, I can't believe it, this is Kid Buu. It's like, come on, please, pay attention to the details, motherfuckers. Damn. And then they sort of finish the scene out by discussing who should be the last member of the team, Gohan or Piccolo. Uh, Vegeta really, like, wants it to be Gohan because he mentions, you know, Gohan has the most latent abilities out of all of the fighters. But Goku, you know, does discuss how Gohan hasn't been training and can't even find his fighting gi. But again, motherfuckers, isn't this a year since the Frieza fight? 
I, it couldn't take more than five fucking minutes. All these people with magic powers. Piccolo can't... Piccolo, ten times, has just given Gohan an outfit. He can't do it now? Am I the only one's pay Am I seriously the only one paying attention here? Gohan, multiple times, Piccolo puts his hand out and says, Here you go, kid. New outfit for you. Yet now we're back in this universe where it's like, Oh, Gohan's still training in this tracksuit because we can't fucking find his gi. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Then after this, there's a quick scene where they head over to Mr. Satan's house and they do successfully recruit Boo, who doesn't want to do it at first because he doesn't like Beerus. But, you know, once they start talking about the Super Dragon Balls and stuff, uh, Boo says that he'll make a wish, you know, he'll have, he'll give his wish to Mr. Satan and let Mr. Satan make the wish. So Boo does decide to join the team. Now after this, it cuts over to... Beerus and Whis, and this is just basically a long recap scene where Beerus and Whis sort of discuss, you know, the events at the beginning of Dragon Ball Super, you know, when Goku first challenged Beerus on King Kai's planet. The other thing I do find interesting about this is they show flashbacks of it, and very clearly these flashback images they're showing us were taken from the Dragon Ball Super Blu-ray, because I remember there was a big hubbub about how bad the animation was during that fight, and it absolutely was atrocious. But they touched it up and made it quite a lot better for the Blu-ray release, which is going to be good, because once we get the Dragon Ball Super dub, whenever it is, I gotta imagine it's going to be these higher quality images, so the show will look a little better. And it's interesting that for this flashback, they are using the shots from the Blu-ray. And then it just goes on to talk, you know, they have like a little recap of the actual Goku vs. Beerus fight. Which, seeing a couple of these, you know, flashbacks to it, that Goku Beerus fight was actually pretty good. Like, I really do have to hand it to it. It was, you know, close to a Dragon Ball Z fight. It was, what, five or six episodes? I mean, the... The Goku vs. Frieza fight was just so fucking fast. It's like, blink and it's done. I feel like, the you know, Frieza just beat the shit out of Goku. It wasn't even really that much of a fight. But anyway, uh, and also at the same time, Whis does kind of mention like, oh yeah, you're, you know, you're changing, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. They also get into it a little bit about how, um, you know, Whis brought Goku and Vegeta to the planet to start training. And, you know, Beerus kind of laughs and says, like, oh, because you're trying to get me uh, uh, to fight serious against them. And then Whis laughs and says, well, you are you just want to get them strong enough to fight me. And then they decide, you know, now we'll go pick up uh, Monica, the only, you know, the fighter who's stronger than Goku, the strongest opponent Beerus has ever faced. Then we see Goku and Vegeta flying. And, like, Goten and Trunks show up, and, like, they're talking about entering the tournament. But Vegeta tells, you know, Trunks, no, you can't do it because, you know, you guys are just going to rely on fusion. If you want to be in the tournament, get strong enough to do it on your own. And then we see a little bit of training between Gohan and Piccolo. And Piccolo evidently decides, you know, for the past year that he's going to be an asshole to Gohan and not make him a fighting gi, even though it's implied right now that they've been training for, like, a fucking year. Come on! <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, they go to ask Piccolo to join the team, and Gohan actually suggests that, you know, he wants to join, and that he's been training with Piccolo for a while, so he's back in shape. And it's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, Dragon Ball Super is about to win me back right now. They're gonna actually make Gohan a fucking badass again. We're gonna go to the tournament. Gohan is gonna go, like, Super Saiyan 3 or some shit, and I'm gonna be fucking hyped again. But no. Within five fucking seconds, Goku goes, okay, Whis is picking us up in four days. And then Gohan's like, oh, well, you know what? Fuck it. I've got a, a business conference. Can't do it. Thanks. Fuck you. Fuck you. They really could have made Gohan a G again. And they just, you know, they, they dangled that little carrot in front of us and said, hey, you want cool Gohan? Too fucking bad, bitch. Gohan remains a shitlord, and you're gonna fucking like it. Oh, damn you. Who do I blame for this, Toei? Who, who, is, who is running the show in this anime? Because right now, they're pissing me off. Too much. And then if that's not fucking all, 
So they ask Piccolo, and Piccolo says, sure, I'll join. And then it cuts to a scene with them uh, back at Bulma's house. Well, I guess Bulma and Vegeta's house. And uh, Bulma's still waiting for uh, Jaco to arrive so that she can go to the center of the universe and, you know, whatever, with the Super Dragon Balls and bullshit. And then they just throw this fucking line in there of, you know, Goku nudging Vegeta like, Hey, Vegeta, I want to ask you something. And Vegeta's like, oh, you want to train in the hyperbolic time chamber, huh? And I'm like, wait, what? Huh? You mean the the room that was permanently destroyed in the Boo Saga? The room where Piccolo says, if the door is destroyed, it is gone forever. And then they just go, and Piccolo standing there just goes, oh yeah, Dende's fixing the door. It won't be fixed till tomorrow. What? What? <laughs> Are you serious? Is this a fucking joke? I mean, <laughs> cool. We get the hyperbolic time chamber back. Awesome. But, like, they, <laughs> they're just rewriting everything. Listen. <laughs> in, like, 20 episodes, when it's revealed that Goku and Vegeta are actually long-lost brothers, just fuck you. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> this shit is getting ridiculous. So, I guess Goku and Vegeta are going to start training in the hyperbolic time chamber. And the episode ends with... Beerus and Whis headed to go get Monica and Whis thinking that it's a bad idea. But, oh, boy, are they... Recently, this anime, man, they are really doing a lot of stuff that's just questionable at best. It's like, these guys have not even really followed, like, the original Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z that close. If they're making all these mistakes and they're not really addressing them... Like, I mean, yeah, sure, you can come in and say, oh, he's going to be able to fix the door. Fine, I can let that slide. But the line about, you know, oob, like, no, come on. Or Bowman now having a sister, come on. Or the dragon now being able to grant three wishes, like, come on, man. This is too much. They are fucking up way too hard. And then the next episode we see... Looks like uh, a lot of Bulma and Jaco as they're trying to find out info on the Super Dragon Balls and stuff. So, uh, alright, you know, hopefully the anime, the anime can still win me back. Like, I'm not gonna stop doing these reviews and stuff, and I'm not pounding my fists against the sky going, Damn you, Dragon Ball Super! But still, I'm very disappointed because, you know, the return of the drag, you know, Dragon Ball anime, I'm thinking good things. And thus far, very, very meh. Especially when I've been watching stuff lately like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is just so fucking dope. And Dragon Ball Super is like 25 levels below that. But it could still win me back. It can. And I hope it does.